Huh? Hello divers, welcome to our channel where we teach all things scuba diving, including diving accidents. My name is Sarah. My name is Aitor. And today we're going to be going into part two of our diving accidents analysis. So if you haven't seen our first video uh, talking about diving accidents, that'll be listed down in the description below. And today the accidents that we're looking at are all related to current. So we know that accident happens every day and especially with current, with a better understanding of how they work, we can prevent some of them. Let's get to it. Video one. Okay. So it says young diver panics while getting flushed in a wall down current. What's a down current? That is a good question. Underwater happens sometimes that depending on the topography of the place, you can maybe feel upwelling current or downstream current. Okay? Current that pulls you away from a wall or maybe down into the deep side of the wall even up to the surface. Yeah, depending on where you are in the world and like he said, the topography, these currents can be really wild. So we're gonna see what happens. You're kind of drifting far apart, don't you think? What? I can see the first problem. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's trying to go head down. Yeah. Kicking at the surface and still, still trying to go. He's doing a great job. So first of all, there's no organization to the dive whatsoever. There wasn't any kind of communication as to when they were going down or how the group was organized. And they have divers all over the place. There's people that are... Yeah, one is, one is at the surface, the other is like far, far away going into the, into the reef. Yeah, so at this point, I mean, really whoever was guiding this dive should have probably canceled and just like reorganize the thing. Depending on what kind of dive site, that might mean needing to jump again or, you know, reorientate to where they are. Yeah, it looks like they are going against the current. And this is the direction of the, of the bubbles. Everybody's so far away, no? Yeah, also... Oh gosh. Yeah. Yeah, they, they are having problems to bridge the wall. Oh god. He's trying to inflate his BCD to counter the pull of the down current. Oh. Yeah, I think he's just screaming, maybe to, to call the attention of the group. He, he's like flush away from, from the wall. Oh, I hate that feeling. Oh, gosh. I wonder how old this kid is. It says young diver. That's got to be just the scariest thing. But he's got a partner there, he's got a buddy there. Yeah, there's some buddy around. Oh jeez. You can just see the bubbles everywhere. Like they're going up and then just getting sucked back down. I think he's, he's going up. Yeah, I think the two of them are making an ascent right now. But they're completely away from the wall. Yeah. Yeah, they couldn't make it. Yeah. Why is he telling him to go back down? Yeah, he's saying, I can't, I can't. Oh, jeez. Uh, okay. Yeah. If you've never experienced a downward current, like watching this can kind of trigger just a small amount of the anxiety that you do feel in that. It's a really serious situation. In places like here in Komodo, we do see downward currents. Yeah. And so it's really important to understand them, understand where they can show up and how to get out of them. I mean, I, I think what happened on that dive is that, first of all, they jumped really far away from the wall. Mm -hmm. Okay, That is the first thing. Then they didn't feel any current on the blue, because obviously you have no reference, but the closer they get to the, to the wall, the stronger was the, the current. And 
it's kind of difficult to reach a wall with that angle when you have a, a strong current yeah. flowing along the along the wall. No, it doesn't say where this is, <laughs> but in the description it gives a, a an interesting thing that we'll talk about after after this. We're not entirely sure what the what the dive site looks like, but that could be that could be the situation that the current was so strong going along the wall and they were hoping to go. The weird thing is that they were going in and then against yeah. the current. So I don't, it just doesn't, the dive plan doesn't make a lot of sense. So that might have been a mistake. Like maybe they jumped, the group got so separated, they had the person up at the top and then they just hit the dive site in a place that they were not they didn't want to hit. The feeling that I get from the beginning of the video is that they wait too long at the surface for other divers to jump. And then the problem with like, like heading down, like uh, with head down, mm -hmm. kicking, like that was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. okay, so it took too long to start the descent. So by the time to begin the descent, they were like too far away from the from the starting point. Yeah, if there's you know. For places where there's a lot of current, where you're expecting a lot of current, we, you know, around here, we teach people to do negative entries, right? And, but we teach them in a different way, not that like kicking at the surface, trying to, you know, force yourself down. You jump with an empty BCD, you start with your head up, deflating or dumping, and then you go down a little bit, you switch and kick and dump from from the back. So it's not a jump in the water, turn over and like splash around at the surface kind of thing because yeah, that yeah. doesn't do anything. Yeah, that is not the facing. Yeah. Maybe that was the case that they ended up in a place that they did not want to actually be diving in at all. Maybe they didn't do a current check to find out how strong the current was. That's also a possibility. Every situation is different and every kind of topography is different. But what people recommend or will recommend when that happens along the wall is not a pinnacle, eh? it's a long wall. The farther you swim from the wall, the weaker is the, the current or even the downstream current disappear. Yeah, let me do something. Oh, are you going to draw? No. Oh, man. <laughs> we got props. Yeah. So, <laughs> this is the wall and you have a rock formation, okay? If the current is coming in that direction, the rock formation, the pinnacle, or whatever is on the way, will displace the water and create an empty space behind. So the water will fill up every empty space. So that water will come back and create behind that downstream current. We're still having a a really strong main uh, flow of current that will push away the downstream for a few meters along the wall. So if you swim away from that wall, you will escape from that downstream current. You will come back to the main flow of current and just drift away, or you will be flushed away, but it's better than be in that nasty current. I think the, the thing that people get freaked out about with that is the wall is certain and it feels safe. Yeah. Whereas, you know, going away from the wall and getting into that main current to go out doesn't feel as secure. From my, well, from both of our experience, we've, we've both had this happen. And another way to get out of it, depending on, again, the topography, you know that it's a very specific kind of channel downward current, we get some of those uh, here in Komodo. You can treat them like riptides as well, where a riptide is where you have a current coming out to open sea from the shore, right? That's something that you see in California all the time. Downward currents like that, you can literally go just a little bit to one side and feel yourself coming completely out of it. If you're already on the wall, then you can play with that. But if you're trying to get to the wall, then you're just swimming yourself, just like this kid, you're swimming yourself into a problem. Yeah, also another way of communication would help, like a noisemaker, something to, to ban your tank just to, 
to call for attention. Yeah, because the screaming, especially when everybody is breathing so hard, you just don't. I mean, he was lucky because his buddy saw that it was a problem and, and he came over to help, but nobody else heard that. What else? He was like kicking really hard to go to the surface and took like a really long time. He was like trapped on that bubbles. I know that can be unsafe, but sometimes some air on the BCD may help. Yeah. It will help just to give you that push that you need just to, to get out. And always when, when doing that kind of ascent, you want to make sure that you also have a hand on a dump valve so that you can uh, regulate that. But sometimes you'll be in a situation that you just have to use your BCD. It's something to consider when you know you have your equipment that you make sure it's well maintained and everything because we kind of think of BCD as just like this. It helps us with our buoyancy and everything, but like it's a real emergency device. Like it is something that can get you out of a situation like that. One thing that I mentioned before is this, in the description of this original vid video, you'll find um, that link in the description. It says, finally they move away from the wall, but the youngin rockets up too fast. Now the more experienced diver tells him he's got to go back down before he bends, before he gets DCS is what it's talking about. Why is that incorrect? <laughs> It's incorrect because if you find yourself in that situation, you make a really fast ascent to the surface, coming back uh, a few meters down, that's not going to help. So if that happens, the best thing to do is just go back to the boat, of course breathe some oxygen, drink a lot of water, and just monitor it for signs or symptoms of uh, TCS. But a recompression, that is what that guide suggests by going down for a recompression that needs to happen in a hyperbaric chamber and take minimum four hours and 45 minutes or five hours and a half depending on the treatment that you get. And also something that divers, they're, they're really confused about. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions you know, in regards to when it's safe to go straight to the surface and when it's not. I mean, we watched this dive from the very beginning. So their whole yeah. dive was a total of less than eight minutes. Yeah. And if you go to even just basic, you go to your tables and you look, I mean, in order for them to get into any kind of decompression situation, they would have had to have gone down to what, 40 something meters? Yeah, 40 something, like 40 meters or... Maybe more, 45 or something. And it didn't look that deep. Like, he didn't maybe... Look that young. Oh, snap. No, I thought the, the young diver was the camera. Oh, uh, yeah? I, mean, I yeah. assumed it was the camera because the other guy is definitely not a young <laughs> diver. <laughs> <laughs> when you look at it in that way, I mean, yes, you you want to always avoid fast ascents, but in general, that kind of, you know, understanding the tables will help you not freak out in situations like this. And especially in this scenario, the other diver was scaring yeah. the one with the, the camera. I mean, the what is called in-water recompression only helps when you have different blend of gases to breathe underwater and accelerate that uh, flash of uh, nitrogen from your from your body. If it's a fucked up, just go back to the boat. <laughs> don't, don't get underwater. <laughs> okay, cool. We're going to go on to video number two. Oh, no. That's a good one. Oh, gosh. And this is a... Uh, a really famous place is um, Socorro Island and it's called Roca Partida. Ah. Okay. Here there it is. Oh gosh. So you can see the current stream and those two divers are stuck in it. I mean, being able to physically see it like that is pretty wild. Yeah. What is particular from this video is that the current is not a upwelling, it's not a downstream, it's a horizontal uh, vortex. That is so unusual. Oh gosh, and you can see all of their buddies are around them, like how do we help these guys yeah. without getting sucked in? 
yeah, you can see the bottles, they just go by size. And we do have a we do have a split fin friend in this group. So yeah. oh wait, no, that that's him. Split fins right there. Yeah, we have many split fins. <sighs> on that group. Oh, it's, no. it's a spin. Oh group. gosh. But look. Look how close is the body and he is not into the current and just that guy is trapped over there. So it's just a, a tiny vortex. Mother nature is wild. Like, how is that even real? So you can see here that he is like using his arms to try and pull himself out. He's kicking like crazy, but his split fins aren't really giving him much um, help here. So I'd be curious to know if he's using his BCD at all, or if maybe like the panic has just taken him completely out of understanding the equipment that he's in. Jeez. It's not going anywhere. It's not moving. That's so wild. Everybody's got split fins, man. I think we need to put out a blog about split fins. Yeah. And how much we hate them. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go. We've got a rescue. We've got a rescue. Yeah. Whoa! Okay. Okay. Let's go back to the to the bottle. Okay. Uh, what? All right. I love it. <laughs> let's let's learn about this with the bottle. Okay, so the topography here is completely different. I don't know if people is aware about uh, Roca Partida, that place. It's a pinnacle, it's the top of an underwater mountain that breaks the surface in the middle of fucking nowhere. Okay? It's totally exposed to the, to the current. So what we have here is a, is a really tall uh, pinnacle okay? with current hitting the rock and going by side. Well, in Roca Partida, can I say, that was a terrible American accent. Roca Partida, <laughs> they dive the protected side of the rock. So that means that what he's explaining here, the current comes in on one side, and here we should have protected space where you don't feel, you still feel current, yeah. but it's not the strength that you find on the other side. So places, a lot of places will dive uh, pinnacles like that, here in Komodo, we are a little bit crazy, so we like to take these deep pinnacles and dive in the split. Yeah. And that means you dive right into the strong current and you stay in that strong current as long as you can until you wrap around and end up on the protected side. They don't do that in Socorro, and I think uh, this is the reason why. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, the, you are on the protected side of the pinnacle and the closer you get to the corners is where you feel what we call here back heading and that back heading is that turbulence that go around sometimes they create that vortex like here uh, but many, yeah down. mostly down down current closer to the surface you may have like upwelling so in this case it must have been just a i mean We've never gone diving there. We've heard all about it, but I'm assuming that this was a strange day. Yeah, yeah I would say so. <laughs> that kind of current and that kind of vortex, it, I mean, it's rare. Yes, yeah, yeah. So, you know, it might have been a, a full moon day, it might have been a new moon day where the currents were just really wild, and so it created this vortex. Uh, but it looks like they forgot to use the equipment that they had. It, I didn't see them reaching for that inflator button at all. And that would definitely be a, a case where I would be on yeah. that inflator button. Because it was obvious that once they got out of it, if they could have just gotten a little bit above it, yeah. they could have been clear. The rescue was interesting because that could have been really, really bad. Yeah. It was a little bit um, risky. And we always teach in the rescue course that if you're going into a rescue, you need to make sure that you as the rescue are safe. And so that was, that was a bit, yeah, it was risky. Age. Yeah, what a day. But at the same time, if somebody is in that much panic, you're not going to be able to wave at them and be like, yeah. <laughs> you know? I don't think that they would respond so well to that. So in regards to the rescue, it was well thought out. They took a little bit of time to figure out what to do, yeah. and then they, they executed. Yeah. And the guys without the split fins were the ones doing the rescuing. 
So that's good. It was a bad situation, but it was not that bad because at least they stay like stationary, you know, at the same depth. If you dive in a potentially dangerous place where that kind of current happens, you need to brief your divers what to do because that is not a skill that you learn <laughs> even on the rescue. When you teach the rescue, you don't, sure. yeah, you don't learn that. So you know because you experienced uh, experience that before as a dive guide of the, of the operation. So I think that must be covered on the, on the briefing. Video three. Okay. So we are transported to the Galapagos. Yeah, another place with a strong current. And you can see it straight away. You just look at the bubbles, you can see them flying away from the group and everybody's got gloves on and holding on to whatever they can. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, oh, we've got split fins again. Yeah. Oh, wow. Ooh. That guy just tumbled away. He's getting pulled from the, the rock like you were talking about in the first yeah. video. Okay, so according to the title of this video, that must have been our dive master. Yeah. Because <laughs> he got swept away. So now we have the rest of the group. <laughs> I will go. <laughs> the rest of the group is back where they're probably supposed to be. And our dive guide is far away. You can see the, yeah. uh, the column of bubbles. But he's also in the stream of the current. So, yeah. oh, that was it. Okay. It was only a minute long. <laughs> Not going to go into it, but dive guide is wearing split fins. Yeah, not that's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, again, we are facing a, a third uh, kind of topography. Mm. Now it looks like a plateau with a lot of boulders of rocks, and that is a really easy place to play with the current, okay? Because there's plenty of, uh, of spots to hide. And um, Again, knowledge and experience will teach you where to hide or where you are protected. Easy tips, you can look at the fish, first thing to do, to see if they are facing the current. Uh, they, all, they always look into the current, okay? So if you see in a wall some fish like looking up, don't go there, that means it's a downstream current there. But if it's no fish at all, just absolutely don't go there, okay? So here, I saw some fish like swimming in circles around and some others behind facing a direction so that means it's a dead spot over there where you can hide. Second tip of the day, just follow your bubbles. You have like five divers blowing bubbles so you can see where they go. If that is gonna, it's gonna tell you the direction of the current. It might be like maybe that's a, a sloping wall. Yeah. And you can see on sloping walls uh, with different depths that you'll get different currents at those depths. So you can go in and it can be just like a gentle current in one direction <laughs> and then, you know, go a little bit deeper and it'll completely change directions. Yeah. So that could have been the case because it did look like the bubbles at first were going behind them, but then at this depth going that way. No? Am I, am I looking at that wrong? No, yeah. Look, here and is... And then there's yeah. the... Yeah, and bye-bye, yeah. dive master. Also, the problem is that he was, like, really, really high. He was, uh, like, above the bottom. And, and then... Yeah, and then you're fine. <laughs> you just to stay, stay low, stay close to the bottom behind the, the boulders. Yeah. Yeah, an interesting way to, you know, they end this dive without any kind of resolution. So if we want to sort of play or put our scenarios together, these, <laughs> I love that reaction of that diver, like, what? I don't know. <laughs> um, what's good is that they're staying calm. That is, that is a good thing. Okay, so yeah, have a look here. Look at the fish. Some of them, they are facing in one direction. The others, they are like all over the place, all over yeah. the place here behind. See, that is a yeah. place to be. And that's, and that's what you teach the drift, drift specialty, yeah. um, especially in our IDC MSDT packages where, you know, we teach instructors to teach these specialties. And it's really fun, but really exhausting. Yeah, it's intense. Yeah, because what do you do with them? Yeah, we push the limits and we go from one dead spot to the other. We try to identify those, like, 
I mean, it's, I always compare that all those dives with a river and doing kayaking. Mm. So underwater we have a main river, but we have a lot of different currents inside. So you need to be able to read them and you can play with them. You can jump from one to another. Uh, some of them, they are stronger than others. So that's what we do in one of the dives on the, on the drift speciality. We just find different spots to hide and we make a team, okay? And we just take turns or rotations, jumping from one spot to the other to the other. The idea is to teach them to look first, figure it out, and then you kind of let go and fly to that spot and then get right back into protection. Yeah, and you, you learn how to play and, and be one with the current. You use your shoulders to just to navigate, turn around. You don't kick and swim like crazy. Yeah. That's not the idea. You can't fight the current. You need to just be one. Be one with yeah. the current. <laughs> what is it? Is that like a Yoda thing? Do or do not. There is no try. I know. No? Be one. No. Damn it. This is from Bruce Lee. Is it? It is be water, my friend. Be water, my friend. What? Yeah. Now water can flow or it can crash. Be water, my friend. Let's move on. Going off of what he just explained, what this group of divers, because obviously they, they looked experienced. They looked like they, yeah. they could handle themselves. So they could have made that team looked ahead to where their dive master was because it looked like he ended up getting to the reef. Yeah. It looked like his bubbles were coming yeah. up from a spot that was very far away. The dive master would not be able to come back to his group. So the group could have looked ahead and did that hopping to meet up with the dive master again. If the situation happens and the dive master disappears and you don't see them, then... Yeah, just follow the dive. That's the thing that people always need to remember that if anything goes wrong, you can just go up. You know, sometimes it does happen that you get separated from your group, especially in strong currents. And it's not a problem. Just yeah. go up. Go up, meet with the group, Take the split fins away from everybody and, and smack them and over smack them the face. <laughs> That's terrible. We're gonna have so much hate in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> I will be happy if people hate me for hating. I think that's it. I hope that this has been helpful to kind of understand currents a little bit better. Obviously, you can't pick up everything you need to know from a little video, yeah. but it is good to have some background knowledge. Yeah, but you can let us know if you want us to make a video just talking about the current and how they work more or less around the world. Okay, just the, the main concept. And because every place is different, obviously. Yeah, current is... It's nothing to mess with, yeah. that's for sure. They're fine. <laughs> <laughs> they're fine until they're not. Yeah. And so it's good to understand what, what the emergency uh, protocols are. Cool. Well, if you liked this video, make sure to give it a big ol' thumbs up. And subscribe to our channel for more videos. If you have any questions about what you've seen here or you want clarification, just leave us a comment. Yep. <laughs> good coordination. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, if you haven't already seen, we have sweet merchandise and our Plastic Planet uh, t-shirt line, so you can check that out. We'll leave the, the link down below as well. And yeah, you can support our small business by doing that. Um, for every like, I will burn uh, a set of split fins. Not burn because that's bad for the environment. Yeah, we'll recycle them <laughs> to something more useful. Like Nothing. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. See you in the next one. Bye. See ya. <laughs> what should the people do? Like subscribe to our channel. Yeah, they, they should because we are almost there. We have almost a thousand su subscribers. Hopefully we have more by the time you're watching this, but we want you here. So subscribe, give this video a like, go check out our other videos over there, and we'll see you in the next one. Yeah. Come on. Go hit the bottom. Ha, ha, ha.